Hello, this is Richard White with the Polytechnic EdTech Instructional Screencast on Passwords. In this presentation, we're going to briefly discuss why passwords are important, how passwords work, ways that a password can be defeated, and finally, how to create strong passwords. Let's get started. Everybody needs privacy. Whether you're protecting your health records, a credit card transaction, a business plan, or a private journal, we accept that people have a right to privacy, and one of the most common ways to protect one's privacy is by authenticating with a username and password. When given a user's ID and accompanying password, a website compares the password given for that user with the one on file. If the passwords match, then the user is considered authenticated. For safety reasons, most websites don't store the plain text, unencrypted version of your password. If my Google password is Batman and stored in plain text, a password file stolen from Google servers would be easily readable by bad guys. Instead, websites take the precaution of converting the password to a hash, an encrypted version of the password. It is this hash that is stored as your password. Converting a password to a hash is a one-way process. Not even Google can reverse it. Google doesn't know your real password, but it knows the hashed version. When you log on to Google and enter your password, Batman, Google compares the hash of Batman with the hash stored on their computers. If the two hashes match, then you must have entered the same password on both occasions. So you are authenticated. It's a pretty good system, but it's not perfect, as you already know if you've ever had a password hacked. Ways that bad guys can crack a password include guessing. If somebody uses one of the commonly used passwords like 123456 or password, it's pretty easy to guess those passwords. In fact, the program John the Ripper is designed to take a dictionary list of commonly used passwords and try them all to guess your password. These passwords are the least secure of all. A social engineering attack manipulates a user into inadvertently revealing information that can be used to guess a password. Email is an increasingly common way of getting people to turn over their information. Don't use links from emails to access websites. Only log on to websites directly from their known address. Finally, if you have a weak password, it's even possible for bad guys to figure it out from the encrypted hash. A rainbow table doesn't try to decode your password. It just takes a long list of common word and letter combinations, calculates the hashes for them ahead of time, and stores them in a table. Bad guys with a stolen hash can then look up on the rainbow table to see if they can find the corresponding password. Let's look at the hashes for three passwords, enter them on a Russian rainbow table website, and see how secure those passwords really are. Let's try the hash for Batman first. It found it. What if I'm a bit clever and add the number 17 to Batman? That gives me a different hash. Let's see if the rainbow table knows Batman 17. OK, I guess my password is still insecure. I know. I'll use my elite skills to create a hash for Batman, where I've cleverly replaced the A's and the word Batman with at signs. Let's try entering the hash for that. It got that one, too. The reason that these passwords are unsafe is that they're too short and too simple. We need to create passwords that are memorable to us, but not guessable or even identifiable to others. Let's see how to do that. There are three requirements for a strong password. It has to be memorable to you. It has to have sufficient disorder so that people can't guess it and machines can't easily stumble upon it. And the password has to be different for every website that you use it for. This is because website servers occasionally get broken into, and if your password works across multiple sites, then the bad guys automatically have access to multiple accounts for you. It's actually really easy to address each of these concerns. To make your password memorable, you're going to develop a key passphrase that becomes the root of all your passwords, add disorder to the passphrase with a few numbers and special characters, and then modify the password slightly based on the name of the website you're using it for. I'm going to use this system to create a password for my Facebook account right now. 
First of all, I'm going to pick a short passphrase that's easy for me to remember, and just use the initials of each word to make a root password. My friend uses the first line from a Harry Potter story to create his password. Harry Potter was a very unusual boy in many ways. Me, I'm a Led Zeppelin fan, so I've chosen to use this line from one of their songs, and she's buying a stairway to heaven, as the root of my passphrase. That becomes capital A-S-B-A-S-T-H. To add a little disorder, I'm going to use a few special characters. The number sign and a four because the song is from their fourth album, and exclamation points at the beginning and end because I really like this song. If this all seems a little complicated, keep in mind that your fingers will quickly learn to remember this root password. You'll be able to type it from muscle memory without any difficulty after you've done it a few times. I'm going to use this root password for every website account. The only thing that's left to do is to make sure that I change it slightly for each website. For my system, I'm going to use the first two consonants of the website at the beginning of every password. So my password for Facebook will have an FC tacked on at the beginning. My password for the Polytechnic School website will have a PL at the beginning, and my Reddit account will have an RD at the beginning. You can come up with your own variations of the system to create and remember your own passwords. There's one last point to keep in mind. The single most important password that you have, and therefore the password that should be the most secure, is the password for your email. The reason for this is that every website you use, including your bank, offers an option to reset your password. And this option is delivered to your email address. A bad guy with access to your email doesn't need to hack your bank password. He can just go to the bank website, ask to have the password reset, and use the email that gets sent to change your password to whatever he wants. Scary, huh? The thing to remember is this. Making and using strong passwords is easy to do and will help keep you safe on the internet. This presentation has been a brief introduction to creating and using good passwords. This has been a Polytechnic EdTech instructional screencast by Richard White. Thanks for watching.